hey everyone, it's Hayes, and in today's video we're going to do the commentary slash analysis for episode 14 of Miraculous Ladybug season 5, Derision. And if it sounds like I'm sad, it's because I am. I just want to have a cuddle. I feel so sad right now after watching that, to the point I'm not even sure if I enjoyed the episode. <laughs> I don't think I did. I need to go watch like Guilt Trip or Party Crash or like, cheer me up or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm about to spoil the whole episode for you. So if you haven't seen it already, please go and watch it. It'd probably be slightly tricky to find, but I believe in you, you can do it. <laughs> please watch it. And also, as always, I haven't read the show Bible or seen any of the leaks pretty much. So um, I would really appreciate it if you don't comment any of them down below. Whilst I've seen all the episodes that are officially out, so at the minute 1 to 20, apart from Intuition, I've seen all of them. Um, I haven't seen anything with the leaks for any of the unreleased episodes. Um, so I'd really appreciate it if you could keep them out of the comments. I'm not really going to be theorising that much in this video, a little bit towards the end, um, but not a great deal. Um, but even so, you know. A lot of people watch me because they don't want to know either. We just like to theorise and guess about it and talk about it. We don't actually want to know. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not even sure if I like the episode, but I think that's more of, like, a personal reason. If you didn't know, I have anxiety and I experience panic attacks quite a lot. I haven't had the best week of my life in terms of mental health. Um, and between, so today is Saturday, so between last Friday when it was Good Friday and Saturday, so eight days, I think I've had about 10, 11 panic attacks. So they are not fun so i kind of go into this episode i was like i hope they do the anxiety justice which in my opinion they definitely did they definitely did i don't have a problem with that um but like it just made me feel so sad because like i love marinette and i've always been able to identify with it like my favorite marinette moment was at the end of heart hunter when she talks to luca one of my favorite scenes from the whole show i've always been able to really identify with it and after this episode identify with her even more and I also love her even more like I didn't do the whole defense of Marinette video for a joke I didn't spend like probably from start to finish it took a whole day to put that video together from making the notes writing everything up in the right order actually filming it editing it stuff like that like I love this girl so much and I love her even more and if, pe if I see I see people being rude about her after this episode. I will make a part two to In Defense of Marinette. Okay, I will do it. I meant what I said in my derision theories. If anyone makes fun of Marinette after this, no, do not. Like if you're a new viewer and have come to this video expecting me to be horrible for no reason to Marinette, this is not the video nor the channel for you. I love Marinette with all of my heart and I love her even more after this episode, okay? So please go find someone else because this is not going to be the video or the channel for you. But like I said, I'm not even sure if I like the episode because I came away feeling so sad. Like, so I watched it once, my reaction, so I did a reaction on it. And like, it's not funny. I understand my reaction videos don't have to be funny, but I do try and make them funny. And often I can with Miraculous. And there were a few funny moments I managed to get in there, but most of the video is just me sat there like because I felt so sad for the whole episode and I just got done re-watching it to make the notes and I feel even worse and now I'm like how am I supposed to do a screaming session on this episode? Because <laughs> I just... Ah, I don't know what to do. So that's something I also just want to ask you at the top of this video. Do you want me to upload the reaction to this? It's not really funny. It's I'm largely sad and kind of angry at some points. So, do you even want it? I did record it, but like, do you want it? <laughs> you can have it if you want, but it might not be the most entertaining to watch, might just make you even more sad as well. So yeah, I'm not actually sure if I liked it, but I'm gonna give the episode a seven out of 10. I really liked it for getting to see Marinette's backstory, but part of me wished that we'd either got this episode sooner, as in like, I don't know, season two, season three even, um, so we could know more about Marinette, our main character, and why she is the way she is. Like, this episode explains a lot of why Marinette is the way she is, particularly around Adrian. And whilst I kind of understand it was only done now, because it's affecting her directly now the most, now she's actually with Adrian, I feel like at the very least, even if this episode didn't come sooner, they really should have maybe just touched on some of the stuff that happened that has caused Marinette 
to be the way she is because it seemed this event with Chloe and Kim at the swimming pool was a major catalyst for the marinette we see in the show. So whilst I don't think anything that happened was, well, I mean, it was horrible, but like, whilst I felt like it was a good way to explain how Marinette has developed to the Marinette we know in the show and why she has so many difficulties with like telling Adrian how she feels and stuff like that and just like feelings, especially romantic feelings. Whilst I think this is very helpful, I feel like it should have been hinted at more, especially more so with Chloe's bullying. Like we've known since Origins that Chloe's bullied Marinette, but because it was never explained until now, I always thought it was a bit more petty and that's not to say petty bullying can't hurt you, of course it can, but I thought it was more like name calling rather than this, which is absolutely disgusting. Not to say, again, like I said, not to say that name calling can't hurt you, of course it can, but like those are two very different kind of bullying. And then there was just like, the episode had a very slow pace to it and part of me is like, well, it was quite serious for a lot of it, apart from like the Akuma attack, the rest of the episode was quite serious. Part of me was like, okay, well, it needed to have that slower pace to get across the serious tone, but I'm also like, mm, it seemed to go on forever and not in a good way. Like I remember when I watched Reunion because I loved that episode so much, it felt like it was going on forever, but it was more of because I didn't want it to end. It felt like that because I enjoyed that episode so much. Whereas this one felt like it dragged. So I was like, mm, that wasn't great, but we're gonna talk about like <laughs> how to fix that a bit later on. So let's get into it. So the opening was awesome with Adrian, best boyfriend, calls her good morning, check she's awake for their date because he knows she's always late. Wonderful. But like he didn't make fun of her for it or like was rude about to her. He was like, yeah, just checking on that you're awake and we're still on for today. Best boy. He was wonderful. And then she kind of like starts to have like, I don't know if there's like a proper name for them, like pre panic attacks, like jitters, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but you're like how, so the first one's in a bed with her hand, she starts to shake a bit, then she goes downstairs and uh, she spills her milk because she has um, another one and like I get those all the time, like I said I've had a lot of panic attacks this week and like, I've had them long enough. I can like feel when they're coming, if you don't know to have anxiety I also have panic disorder because I get that many panic attacks, they were like we need a separate diagnosis for the sheer volume of them that you have and I was like okay, <laughs> thank you. So I was just like, it just still baffles me how people don't take it seriously. Especially when, at least in this episode, you can see the effect it has on Marinette. Like, I don't know if you're aware, maybe you're not if you don't have anxiety, but having panic attacks does scare me because first of all, they're not very nice, but also second of all, they can give you an increased risk of having heart attacks. Like, they are not just like, oh, a little panic when you get nervous about something. They are really serious. They can cause long-term even more serious health conditions like like i said if anyone is making fun of marinette after this i will not be happy with them i'm gonna be furious all right <laughs> like i'm trying to find some humor in this but i'm really struggling because i'm sad but i don't want to be sad during this video because it's gonna be boring to watch so i have a lot to say it's gonna be a longer video so i was like okay we need to make it but like i really loved how it was shown in the changing room so they arrived at the Cool. they like pay for the tickets or whatever they both go in the separate changing rooms Adrian looking super concerned Adrian was amazing in this episode just overall um, and then Marinette has mm, I wouldn't have said that was a full panic attack again it was like the start of something bigger but like she's struggling to breathe and she's leaning against the wall I just feel like as a person with anxiety like everyone who has panic attacks they've all probably not been exactly the same as Marinette's. Like, that's the thing with mental health when you portray it in a book or on film, TV, whatever, is that mental health, even though you have the same sort of symptoms, they often present very differently in other people. That's why some conditions can be so hard to diagnose. Try not to go down PhD, talk my PhDs in mental health if you didn't know. <laughs> uh, not anxiety, but it's still important. Um, so um, I really liked how that was done in the changing rooms. I thought that was, well, I mean, it was hard to watch. When I describe something as awesome in this episode, I don't mean like, oh yeah, that was fun and enjoyable to watch. Like, honestly, I didn't really enjoy watching this episode the first time or the second time, but I think that's just purely because, not because it was a bad episode, because of, I have anxiety and I have a lot of panic attacks because I have panic disorder as well. So 
it was difficult for me to watch. I would think someone who maybe doesn't like Marinette that much or also maybe doesn't have anxiety or knows much about it may have found more enjoyment in this episode. Because, yeah, it's not because it was a bad episode, but I won't lie, I did struggle to find enjoyment in this episode because of how, like, just how bad I felt for Marinette, but also because of how much more I can identify with her. So I was just like, yeah. So then Marinette runs off, and this is kind of where I think they should have changed the flashbacks a little bit. And then she, like, says to Adrian, like, uh, like, stop pretending you care about me. And he is very confused, and so was I, and maybe you were too. So what I think they should have done, which would have helped with the pace, is to basically, because I think all the flashback they showed was necessary, I don't think they put in more than was needed. I think it was all necessary. What I think they should have done is maybe start splicing the flashback with the episode. So the way the episode went, so it opens and it goes from Marinette waking up to Marinette almost getting acclimatized, the whole of the flashback, and then Kim explaining to Adrian and Undyne what happened. And then it goes on to the end of the episode in present day. What I think would have been better is if they spliced present day more with the flashbacks. So it went back and forth. And part of me is like, is that a good idea though? Because hey, you've got to remember, yes, you're a 26 year old, this is for eight to 10 year olds. And I'm like, could they get confused? And I'm like, yes, possibly. However, I feel like the flashbacks are really obvious. Everyone in the flashbacks pretty much is wearing different clothes. I think Chloe's not wearing different clothes. Was Julica? I'm not sure. Rose had a different hairstyle. Kim had a different colour jumper. Max had a different hairstyle. Max looked great. Um, Milan had a different colour thingy on. Even Nathaniel had a different colour shirt. So I feel like it was obvious, plus around the side of the screen, it was the different colour. Marinette was wearing different jeans. She had her hair a different way. So clean was at school as well, which she's moved on to um, high school now, right? Oh god. <laughs> the French school system <laughs> baffles me. We don't have middle school here, so middle school always confuses me. <laughs> like, to me, the flashbacks did seem quite obvious, and I feel like they would be obvious to a child as well. Plus, as well, pretty much all the flashbacks take place at school, whereas the rest of the episode pretty much takes place at um, the pool, or they think they were near the Louvre, around that area. So there's only part of the flashback that was at the pool, but again, even in the pool sections, Marinette is wearing a different swimming costume and has a blue cap. In the present day, she has a different swimming costume and a pink cap. So I don't necessarily think it would have confused them. I think it would have been okay. And plus as well, with the way the episode stands, like I said, it did feel like it dragged quite a bit. Maybe seven out of 10 is too generous. <laughs> But I feel like the rest of it was really well done, so I'm like, the pace was bad, but everything else was really good about it, so. Um, but I feel like, because children, they don't often always have the best attention spans, uh, because this episode drags so much, even though it is an important episode, I believe it's important to learn about, first of all, anxiety, as well as the consequences of your actions, because this happened pretty much a whole year ago. Season 5 is the tail end of this whole year at school in ninth grade and this happened right at the end of eighth grade so it's a whole year later this is still really deeply affecting Marinette so I feel like it's important for them to learn about anxiety as well as the consequences of their actions because like as Kim said towards the end we'll talk about it more when we get there it's like he didn't even know Marinette was upset he didn't even realize that so he, like it's kind of like you don't get to decide how someone feels based on what you did it's like okay well you didn't know it but that doesn't mean you didn't make them feel like that you know it doesn't excuse what you did right so part of me is a bit like on the fence like yeah they might have been confused however i feel like splicing the past and present together like every other scene or every two scenes or something to first of all just like pick the pace up a bit just because i, f I feel like <laughs> people would have been turning off i feel like if i was a casual viewer i didn't really care that much about the show and didn't review it to make videos about it for you all i feel like i possibly may have switched it off like I said, maybe seven out of 10 was <laughs> too generous, but like that when she says that to Adrian, it's just confusing. And yeah, it is explained eventually in this episode. It's not like they leave us hanging until like episode 20 to explain what happened in this one. Fair enough, it's all explained together within the same 20 minute window, okay. But it just drags a bit and does seem confusing in some places. So I was wondering if it'd be better to splice it all. It's just my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to rearrange it myself manually and see if that looked better. But I just feel like it drags and is quite boring as it stands. And like I said, I feel like this episode would have been better if there were more hints earlier. Because like I said, I feel like Chloe's bullying was just petty, which like I said, still hurts. But I didn't realise it was as serious 
as this and it, it's pretty serious to be honest so the first bit i just thought because we were married i was like having like flashbacks of her locker i don't know it was kind of wavy i wasn't sure what it was at first it was her locker door so then she picks up the books and the books are there which isn't very nice but then she runs into the bathroom and trips over that water Marriott could have seriously hurt herself if she'd fallen and hit her head, hit the wall, hit the toilet cubicle, hit a sink or whatever. She could have seriously hurt herself. So like I said, it's not just, when did pollen fall over? No. <laughs> so like I said, it's not just like petty name calling. Whilst that still hurts and that's still horrible and that's still not okay, Marinette could have seriously injured herself. And then science class, I just don't get why the teachers don't do anything. They all need to be fired, I swear to God. Like, I love Miss Bustier, I know she wasn't in this episode. But like, she just does nothing when she sees it. And I'm like, do something. But like, so after Marinette left, to be fair, what Chloe wasn't being super nice, but I don't think you could have said it was like outright bullying. But what she says to Rose and Julica, particularly Julica, making fun of her for not talking very loudly. And Miss Mendeleo was just like, yeah, this is fine, this is normal. I don't, I don't get it <laughs> at all. So then they're all talking and Rose is like, oh, well, her mum's left. This is why she's like that. And Milan's like, well, my mum's left as well. I don't have a mum either. I don't do this. I was like, yes, Milan, thank you. <laughs> And then so clean, oh my god. I didn't really have much of an opinion on her before. Like, she was fine in jubilation. I was like neutral towards her, like she was in transmission, I think, and briefly in perfection as well, just like little bits here and there. I don't hate her, I was just, I really had no opinion towards her other than you have the worst name in the show, so clean. I'm so sorry. <laughs> An unfortunate tragedy, you've been given the worst name. Um, but I loved her in this episode. She was awesome. And she was so right about Kim that because Marinette has been treated so badly by Chloe and because Kim just showed like a gram of kindness towards her, he was like, hey, do you want to borrow my swimming trunks? Like, to be fair, it was a good idea. Like, because of that, she thought she liked him. Like, I'm not 100% sure Marinette actually genuinely liked Kim, but like, this isn't really a criticism of her because so much was happening to her at school and this one boy was so kind to her, she thought she liked him. I can kind of understand that. So I can kind of understand where she's coming from and so clean's like, are you sure you're not like confusing kindness for complete and utter idiocy? <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, okay. Uh, I can see where you're coming from, but I guess this is like a remark about the whole show in general. Why hasn't Marinette felt, not necessarily uncomfortable, but not felt a certain type of way around Kim? I couldn't think, I mean, I know they don't talk loads, but I don't, I can't really think of a, an instance where Marinette has shown any kind of dislike for Kim. And I know Marinette's not like a vindictive person like I am. <laughs> Marinette's always going to be a better person than I am. But like, you know what I mean? Like she's always seen completely fine with around him. And even though she knew Chloe roped him into this, I still wouldn't be okay around him because he was still complicit, even if he didn't 100% understand what he did was wrong. Which I do believe, I don't think, I think he thought he was going to be hilarious. Um, I don't think he was doing it maliciously. Um, I think he thought it was going to be funny. But like, in Dark Cupid, she helps him with the girl he likes and stuff like that. She entrusts him, actually no, she doesn't entrust him with the monkey miraculous. Forget that, but you know what I mean? Like, she goes back to him and gives it him several times after Master Fu gives it him for the first time Party Crasher. So this is more of like a remark about the rest of the show. Like she seems completely fine being around Kim. And I'm not saying she should be rude to him or bully him back as like revenge, but I do feel like she should be some degree of feeling a bit uncomfortable around him because of what happened, because I definitely would. You know what I mean? So I'm a bit like, eh, okay. So then we get to the even more serious part of the episode and I was just like Chloe oh my god so like I said I don't think Kim was trying to be malicious he was just going along with what Chloe said Chloe was being malicious he genuinely thought it was going to be hilarious um but like Marinette could have died she could have drowned if she'd hit her head when she fell backwards onto like the board or whatever and then she'd fallen in the pool she could have drowned and she was so shocked she looked like she was about to have a panic attack I mean I'm not a big swimmer I really don't like swimming I can swim don't really enjoy it though what if she'd had a panic attack underwater? I don't, like, is that possible? Like, you can't breathe properly when you're having a panic attack. What if that happened? She started having a panic attack on the diving board, she fell backwards into the water, and she physically couldn't get herself to the surface, and the lifeguard had to go in and get her because she was having a panic attack underwater. Like, like I said, I thought it was just, like, petty name-calling, which isn't okay either, but 
that's very different to Chloe nearly basically having killed Marinette when they were like 12, 13 years old and then Chloe filmed it? Or Sabrina filmed it? What? It was on Chloe's orders presumably. Like, I am really struggling <laughs> with Chloe, like literally at just like this moment in time because like this whole season I've been like, I don't think it's gonna happen this season but I would like Chloe to ultimately be redeemed. I don't think it's gonna happen this season but you know, it's not over until the show is whenever that's gonna be finally over at this rate, it's gonna be season 46 <laughs> by the time we get to the end, but you know what I mean? The chance of Chloe being redeemed isn't gone until the show is over. So I'm still holding out hope, but they are making it increasingly hard to redeem this girl. Like they are just like, no, no, forget it. Like I know a lot of people say like Thomas Asterix just hates her and I'm like, yeah, maybe he does. And now I'm like, yeah, he does hate her. At the end of the season, I was planning on doing an In Defense of Chloe video, but I'm like, what on earth can I say to defend this? And I'm like, I physically cannot. There is no... There's literally no way around this. But I'm just glad So Clean was there to get rid of the foam, and then also to help Marinette. And like I said, like, her whole, like, speech about being like, I need to, like, you were right, I really didn't know enough about Kim before I went on like this date or whatever it was with him. I need to know more about him, like just how he is like as a person. And is he kind, is he nice? But also other things about him, I just need to be better prepared, which obviously plays back in to Origins. And she, cause one of the things she said is they better not be friends with Chloe. I can't date someone who's been friends with Chloe. And Adrian comes into school, like Chloe tells everyone like, my best friend Adrian's coming here today. You're like, better be nice or whatever. Like, so, Marinette before she even meets Adrian, all she knows is this boy is Chloe's friend, therefore I hate him already. So it explains so much. That's why I'm kind of like, not necessarily this episode should have been um, shown before, like in season two or season three, because I understand why it's shown now, because it's affecting Marinette, now she actually is dating Adrian, but like, I just feel like it was needed before, just some better hints of how serious it actually was and why Marinette is the way she is. You know, so I was just like, Marinette's whole like behavior towards Adrian since the start of the show is just so much more understandable. Now, I think I definitely need to make a part two to my defense of Marinette video. I love this girl. <laughs> I love her so much. I don't want it to get her. Oh my gosh, I love her. And like this episode, I feel like is gonna really help the people who really dislike Marinette so much. They're just, it's just horrible. I just hope, even though this episode made me very, very sad, I hope the people who really dislike Marinette watch this episode and try and learn something. Because not only are they horrible in their hatred towards Marinette, they are horrible to the people who do like her, people like me. Luckily, most of the comments under the In Defense of Marinette video were very nice. Even the ones that disagree with me, they're like, oh, I still don't like her for these reasons. And they, you know, really had a reasonable response to the things I was saying in my video. They were nice, they were kind. But there were literally two comments that were just absolutely awful. And I just decided to delete both of them because they were downright horrible and basically trying to bully me about it. And I was like, no, get lost, you're gone. Okay, <laughs> like, no, we're not having this. So it's just absolutely horrible. So I really hope this episode, first of all, really shows to them what Marinette went through and the reasons why she is the way now. And also shows to them how much her actions have consequences. Because some people just, when they're on the internet, they just don't seem to think that anything they say matters. And I'm like, yeah, it does matter. Just because they don't know your name, your face, where you live, where you went to school, whatever, it still matters just because they don't know who you are and you're hiding behind a screen name and a profile picture of Chloe or something. You know what I mean? Like, it still matters. People just are stupid. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, all the teachers need firing. Like, that bit with So Clean and Chloe. Like, when I was watching the reaction, I was like, well, they can't do anything. It happened outside school. Like, even though Chloe basically did try to kill Marinette, again, they can't do anything because it happened outside school. Really, they should have called the police, to be honest. I would have called the police. Also, why does Sabine and Tom literally do nothing most of the time? They literally just believe on. Like, in the episode Ladybug, back in season three, they're like, yeah, Lila's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're gonna trust this girl who we don't know over our daughter. Like, I understand Lila did have evidence. Fake evidence, nonetheless, but still evidence, you know? But, like... I don't, the adults in this show are stupid. Like I think the adult with the most common sense of the show is probably 
Emily or Mr. Banana and Natalie. <laughs> Just the three of them. <laughs> we only need those three. <laughs> like fire all the teachers, seriously. They're just awful. But I really liked how Marinette kind of like saved herself from her own akumatization. I thought like Adrian was gonna come in from the trailers, but like she saved herself from what So Clean said as she was leaving the school. And it really echo back to Alia. Like So Clean and Alia after seeing this episode, they seem very, very, very similar. Remember back in Origins, obviously Alia starts at the school um, and she says a majestic quote, I don't know properly word for word, but she's like, in order for like evil people to triumph, it's so that good people don't do anything to stop them. That's not a direct quote, it's roughly that. I don't know, I can't remember what exactly she said word for word. But like, they are very, very similar characters, so I can really understand why Marinette really likes Alia, because Alia from the start is like, no, Chloe, horrible. We don't like you. <laughs> so I can really understand why Baron and Alia are such good friends because Alia is like a version of So Clean. So I really liked that Marinette managed to calm herself down and save herself. Panic attacks are really, really difficult. And I mean, I've never been akumatized, but that also seems very, very difficult. So I'm really happy she managed to save herself. So that was the end of all the flashbacks. And oh my God, Kim, what is wrong with you? I mean, this episode showed like, you are not okay mentally. Also, like, just to say, like, all of that and still think that was hilarious after Marinette, like, nearly drowned. You're like, oh, Chloe, she's so pretty and funny. In front of your girlfriend? Like, I know Kim used to have a crush on her. Dark Cupid. But, like... <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, Kim? Do you not have a brain? Where is it? And I absolutely loved as well in the scene, Adrian's starting to get angry, oh boy. So then we get to the Akuma attack. And like I said, this is why I feel like the flashbacks would have been better kind of more spliced up because that was super serious for quite a big chunk. The flashback goes on for quite a while, um, but the Akuma is quite funny. But also at the same time, I was struggling to enjoy it because of how sad and how long it went on for. Like I understand the Akuma was about to be funny and we needed that comic relief, but I was so depressed by the time we got to the Akuma. I was like, I am not enjoying this. Like. This episode just makes me sad. But I do really hope you found it funny because it was definitely needed to break up the seriousness of the flashback and then we have right at the endings bracketed again by something more serious with Chloe. But we'll get to that in a bit more. So protective Adrian, yes, as Cat Noir, he was like, this boy, he deserves it. And I was like, I do not condone violence, but also I would also agree in this instance. <laughs> like, yes, I thought he was wonderful. And again, it also gave the Akuma attack a more serious tone pretty much up until Cat Noir gets hit with the arrow or whatever and his cataclysm turns into like the bouncy balls. So I was like, it makes it more serious again. The tone of this episode was just a bit strange. Maybe it should be a six out of ten. Because <laughs> the tone and the pacing and the structure were just a bit off. Like migration yesterday was amazing with the tone and the pacing and the structure and the plot and this is a bit like <laughs> in comparison. Like it was important, don't get me wrong, but I'm also like, mm, writing wise not the best episode. Which is a shame as well because I believe from what I heard on Twitter, Derision is the episode that took the longest to write. And I'm like, I'm not really sure why, to be honest. But part of me is wondering now because it took the longest. Has it been overwritten? That's the thing. If you spend so long writing something and going back and re-editing and revising all of it or just bits of it, sometimes it's overwritten and ends up being not as good. So maybe that's what happened here. I can't remember the time frame, but apparently it took about four times as longer than the other episodes. So I'm a bit like, crikey, maybe it was a victim of overwriting. They took too long on it and it became bad because they got too focused on it. Sometimes I think as a writer, it's best just go for it, see what happens. I think it's like the see what sticks method. You just throw it at the wall and see what doesn't fall. <laughs> so maybe it's a victim of overwriting, possibly. I don't know. But what I am really hoping from this is that we've seen Adrian can get pretty angry and he's started to get more angry this season, which is great. I don't know if that's just because he's got more freedom since he no longer has to do modeling or whatever, but I'm like, I'm hoping in the finale, you are gonna do something to your dad. Just, even if you don't hit him, because violence is not good. But just say how you're truly feeling to this man, you know, really communicate how he's made him feel. Because I'm not sure if Adrian's aware of this, but he's being emotionally abused. He's being emotionally neglected by his dad. Not so much this season, he's been a better dad to him this season, but he's still a pretty bad parent, a pretty bad dad. So like, you know, I really want him. Like, we know you can get angry, Adrian. 
So do it. Don't wait. Do it. Please. <laughs> and I know this was just needed for the episode. They couldn't wait the five minutes or whatever. But like Tiki, oh my god. Eats at apparently lightning speed in order for Marinette to get another lucky charm. Okay, Tiki. <laughs> and also another thing I really disliked about the Akuma is the fake laugh track. <sighs> it just seemed really ingenuine. Like, I feel like after Cat Noir gets hit with the arrow, the rest of the scene was funny enough on its own, even though I didn't personally find that much enjoyment in it because of what happened. The rest of the episode, it's like, I feel like the whole sequence with like the toilet and stuff and the glue and things was funny enough without the laugh track and it just made it seem really fake. I don't know, maybe that's just because of the rest of the episode and how serious it was. The laugh track didn't come across as funny to me. It was just like, okay, a bit strange. It was a really odd choice, I think. So I was just like, yeah. So then back at the pool after the Akuma, Ondine, amazing. Like what she's been in, she's like been in Siren, Heroes Day, um, Ephemeral. I think that was like literally it. <laughs> I can't remember the last time she actually had lines, probably in Siren. We hardly ever see her. Um, she was amazing. Like she was like, Kim was like, I had no idea I hurt her feelings so. though. It's like, okay, yeah, fair enough you didn't know, but like, you still gotta apologize when someone tells you. Like I said before, you don't get to decide if you've hurt someone's feelings, okay? Like, yeah, you might not have meant to, but if you have done, then you should still say sorry. You don't get to decide if you've hurt them, you know? So then they leave the pool, and I love the little Adrianette at the end where Adrian's like, I'm always gonna be here for you, we can work this out together, you don't have to do this on your own. And she goes to take his hand and then she's like, no, I'm not quite ready. And whilst the Adrianette shipper in me wish she'd taken his hand and been like, yeah, we can do this together. Like, I don't think that was a full out rejection that she can't do, like, use Adrian's help, they can't do this together, you know? I did kind of like that she wasn't okay right away. Like, a lot of people think that when someone's mentally ill, if they get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, that they're gonna be fine, that their partner can like miraculously cure them of their depression, their anxiety. I'm like, no, sadly, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't. Just because you have depression doesn't mean you're gonna stop having depression the moment you get a boyfriend. Depression doesn't work like that. So I'm kind of, even though it's sad to watch, obviously, I'm kind of glad she wasn't okay right away. Like, that's not to say I don't think Marinette's not gonna talk to Adrian about how she feels and lean on him for help when she needs it. I think she totally will and I hope she does because that's a great and healthy relationship if she does that with him. I think that would be good if she did but she knows she has like a lot of self and inner work to do in order to come to terms with everything that happened and like rebuild herself and her self-esteem you know. So I kind of like she wasn't okay right away and knew she had to do some stuff for herself as well instead of purely relying on Adrian which I really, really liked. So, the very, very ending with the scene with Chloe. Like I said, they are making Chloe redemption very, very difficult. <laughs> Extremely difficult. And I definitely think um, Sabrina is like gonna betray Chloe, like Sabrina's face in this scene. And when Chloe was like, oh, they're just doormats for us to use. And Sabrina was like, not a fan of that. If I was Sabrina, I would have either just left or thrown the bottle of nail polish at Chloe. <laughs> I'd be like, no, no, I'm not staying for this, goodbye. And I just love Adrian. He's like, went to confront Chloe, now he finally understood everything. Which, like I said, I feel like it should have been hinted at a bit more, because it did kind of come out of absolutely nowhere. Um, but, like, he was, like, willing to basically cataclysm kick because of what he'd done to Marinette. And he was willing to drop Chloe as his friend, who he's known since he was a child, for Marinette. And I was just like, yeah, great boyfriend. Like... Why would you want to date anyone else? This is why I don't have a boyfriend. Adrian Agreste is the standard. And I have yet to find anyone remotely similar. <laughs> so what's the point? I don't need one if he's not gonna be exactly like Adrian. And it's just a bit like, does Chloe do all of this just because? Just because she hates Marinette, because she's an easy target, because she looks down on her because of the class disparity between them? I don't know, but like I said, it's making giving Chloe a redemption arc very very difficult they really do not like chloe in the writing team oh my god <laughs> they're like no forget chloe so um yeah but i'm just a bit worried about adrian like is chloe gonna do something because right at the end she says traitor so i'm a bit like hmm but that's for another video another day so i did give it a 7 out of 10 but after discussing all of this i think i'm gonna put it down to a 6 out of 10 didn't have the best pacing and overall 
structure and the tone was off. I'm not sure the Akuma was quite right for this episode. Also a bit annoyed that they just pretty much reused Dark Cupid's design. Like that was just a bit strange when it was really nothing similar to Dark Cupid, really in my opinion. But feel free to disagree with that. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10. Um, usually I'd give it lower if the tone and structure and plot was that bad. However, I do feel like they portrayed Marinette's anxiety really well, a song with anxiety, but obviously feel free to disagree like I said before. Mental health conditions present really differently in other people, so if this wasn't your version of anxiety, you didn't feel represented, you're completely within your right to think that. Um, that of course is okay, um, but like I really liked the way they portrayed it and how Marinette resolved it largely on her own, which I really liked, but with like the past help of So Clean and Adrian and stuff, I thought it was great. So for that reason, Marinette, of course, is getting the MVP. She was amazing in this episode. I love her even more now. She is my daughter. I love this girl with my whole heart and I will defend her until the day I die. I love her so much. However, special mentions to, of course, Adrian, best boyfriend in the world. He was amazing. Also, to So Clean, she was amazing too. Now I want to see more of her in the show. Let's go back to the art shop for an episode, please. I want a spin-off show of So Clean's art <laughs> show, please. That'd be awesome. And also to Ondine. She was amazing in this episode too. She does nothing for like three seasons, then comes in and delivers some of the best lines in the whole show. <laughs> yes! So yeah, I'm not actually sure if I enjoyed the episode because I, I still feel sad. So... I don't know, I need to go and watch Party Crasher and Guilt Trip to cheer me up. But anyway, besties, i love to know what you think of this episode. If you're gonna write me a little essay, I cannot wait to read it, but please put in some paragraphs. I also just wanna say, it's fine after this episode, you still don't like Marinette. However, what I will not stand for in the comments is just unbridled hate towards her. I personally do not like all of the characters in Miraculous. I don't pretend that I love them all, because I don't. I despise Chris, and whilst I did used to hate Kagami, she's definitely grown on me. She is definitely not in my top 30 of my favourite characters in Miraculous. I still don't like her a lot. However, the difference between me disliking Chris and Kagami is that I say I dislike them, and whilst sometimes I do talk about why I dislike them when they're in an episode, more so Kagami than Chris, because Chris is never in it. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw Chris. Was it Simple Moon? I don't even know. But anyway. I don't go on full on hate filled vitriol rants about how much I despise these two characters or any other characters that dislike. Not a big fan of Kagami's mum either, not a big fan of Felix, but I don't do that. There's a difference between disliking a character, which you of course are allowed to do, and the hate filled rants I see on Twitter, on Instagram, on Reddit, in YouTube comment sections about Marinette, Zoe, whoever. Okay? So if I see any of that, I'm just gonna delete it. You're entitled to your opinion, of course you are, but I don't think you should be just spewing hatred for the sake of hate, okay? So I'd love to know what you all think, besties, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!